In JavaScript, a promise can be used to chain actions when the async operation either succeeds or fails. We have been using promises in many places like in jQuery when we use to call web services and in other places like fetch API etc. But have you ever wondered what we need to do if for some reason we may need to return a promise from our custom function encapsulating business logic of our application? The common examples of using a deferred object can be handling latency of actions, providing clean code to validate input and handle errors, game development etc. In this video, I am going to show you how to do just that. I will be using the $Q promise library with JavaScript set timeout to show you how we can use the deferred object's promises to handle a successful or failed business logic operation. I will also show you how we can convert the core JavaScript XML HTTP request objects use so that it will use the deferred object to notify the user if the async fetch is successful or not. So first things first, we need to use a suitable promise library and there is a pretty good one available out there which is $Q. So, so many different JavaScript frameworks are actually internally using this $Q library and it can be downloaded from GitHub from its URL which is github.com forward slash Chris Koval and then Q. I have already went through the trouble of downloading the JavaScript file of this Q library. So here it is q.js. So now let's start with the first example in which we will be introducing some kind of latency to the code by using the javascript set timeout function. We will also be using a condition which will be helpful in either resolving the promise or either rejecting the promise by using a deferred object. So the normal way in which we can use the set timeout function is by first providing a function as an argument which will be called after a fixed duration which is another argument which this set timeout function accepts and this value is in milliseconds. So we will be using the set timeout to introduce latency which is of 3 seconds and the first thing which I will do is I am going to create a function and let's just call it delayed execution and also let's have a argument for it number and then let's first create the variable for the deferred object which we are going to use so where deferred equals to q dot defer next we will be using the set timeout so set timeout and then let's provide the timeout which is of 3000 milliseconds and then in this function what i am going to do is i am going to either resolve the promise or reject the promise based on a condition and that condition is going to be we will be checking this number against a constant value so if number is let's say less than 10 then we are going to reject the promise and the callback function which will be called when the promise will be rejected is going to have an argument which is going to be an error object so new error and then let's also provide a message with it number is too small so when the promise will be rejected and when the rejection callback will be called then this error object will be provided as an argument to it and if the number is either equals to 10 or bigger than 10 then we can resolve the promise so deferred dot resolve and let's also provide another message indicating that the promise has been resolved so number is of the right size and finally we will have to return the deferred objects promise so that we can use it to chain the success or error callbacks so now it's time to call the function so delayed execution and let's just provide a value of 11 so that the promise is going to be resolved and dot then let's provide an error function as a success callback so we will also need the message argument and let's also log the message to the console so console.log and then message for the catch part let's also provide another function callback so catch and then let's provide an arrow function and this time we are going to have the error and i'm just going to log the error object directly to the console so console.log error and now it's time to run the code to see 
what is being printed on the console. So let's just now run this code and see the output in the console of the browser. So I'm going to open this web page using the open with live server extension and let's just click on it. Let's press F12. So the message is now printed because we have used set timeout to introduce artificial latency. So this hello is from the initial set timeout statement which we have written and the message which is being printed is number is of the right size because this condition which is to resolve the promise is being evaluated as true if we wish to see what will happen if we will set a value which is less than 10 then the promise will be rejected and we will see a different output so now you can see the error which is number is too small and this is the message which we have provided with this error object in this way we can use the deferred object by introducing artificial latency let's now look at a more serious example in which we will be using the deferred object with the javascript's xml http request object and we will use it to asynchronously load the contents which are inside a text file so let's just first create a text file which we are going to read for that i'm just going to create a new text document and let's just call it message and let's open this message in this i'm just going to write a message like hello world save the file close it get back to the code so to use the javascript's xml http request object to read a text file asynchronously we can have a function like this one so this code is pretty basic a new xml http request object is being created and then a new request is being sent to read the message.txt file and if the request is successful then the contents of the message.txt file will be printed to the console so over here what we are going to do is we are going to use the deferred object to either reject the promise if the asynchronous request is not successful otherwise we will simply resolve the promise so that the resolve callback will get called for that first we will create a variable and let's just call it where deferred equals to q dot defer and now we need to make changes to this on ready state change function the first thing which i will do is i am going to modify this condition so if the ready state is 4 then we need to have another block and then if the xml http objects status is 200 this will mean that the request is successful and we can resolve the promise otherwise the request is not successful and we will have to reject the promise so if the status is 200 then deferred dot resolve and then we need to provide the xml http dot response text as an argument for the resolve callback and similarly when we are rejecting the promise then we can provide an error object as an argument with some kind of message like unable to open the file and we can remove this code from over here and then finally after sending the request we will need to return the deferred dot promise so that we will be able to chain callbacks with this promise object so now it's time to call this load message function so load message dot then first we will provide the success callback if the callback is successful then we can have an argument like the message so console.log same thing which we did above message and if the asynchronous operation is not successful then we can simply have error callback and for this let's have another arrow function this is going to provide an error object as an argument and let's just log this object directly to the console so console.log and then the error 
and now it's time to see if this code is working or not so when i'm refreshing the page then the message hello world is being printed which simply means that the text file is being read successfully so now to fail this asynchronous request all we need to do is to make sure that the text file is not being read by this code and for that we can simply rename the text file so i'm just going to rename this message.txt with a new name and let's just append one after it now refresh the page again the live server extension has already refreshed the page and we can see that the console has the message error unable to open the file because we are trying to open message.txt but the file name is actually message1.txt if i will add one over here and let's just save the code and the file is now being again read successfully and with that it's time to end this video and do let me know what you think about it if you like it if you don't like it or if you have any questions then please feel free to use the comments area also please subscribe to this channel if you want to be the first to know about any latest video updates this will also help this channel to grow by you becoming a part of this community so i will see you in the next video till then have a great time